Hey guys, in this particular video I'm going to be introducing you to the concept of an equivalent force couple system. So let's start off with some generic looking body like this, and let's say that we've got a few forces acting on this body. In particular, let's say we've got a force here acting on this body called F1, and let's say we've got a force here acting on this body which I will call F2. Right, this is as generic as it comes, but I'll only have two forces on this so that I can make it a little bit simpler. And let's say we wanted to find out the equivalent force couple of this system at point A. So about point A. Well, the trick to solving this is to realize that this free body diagram can, express, can be expressed in an equivalent way. So let's do that by simply copying and pasting what I've got here and updating this free body diagram to the right. So let me do that real quick. This free body diagram is going to be equivalent to the free body diagram I've got on the right. Well, let's get started. We know that the sum of forces acting on our body, the sum of forces acting on our body is simply going to be F1 plus F2. That shouldn't be too hard, right? And we can obviously find this out a few different ways, but I think the easiest way is graphically. This is going to be F1 just here. This is going to be F2 just here. This is going to be F2. This is going to be F1, which means that this right here is going to be our net force, our net force just here. Okay, which means that in our equivalent free, um, in our equivalent force couple system, the equivalent force is simply just the net force just here. This is going to be our net force just here. Right? We're halfway there. We found the equivalent force about point A. Let's see if we can find the equivalent couple. Well, in order to do this, let's actually first me define what I mean by positive and negative moments. So this is going to be what I'm going to call positive to the right and positive upwards, which means by the right hand rule, I'm forced to accept that counterclockwise is positive, right? So let's find the total moment about point A due to these two forces. Well, the total moment, the sum of moments about point A is simply going to be our force one times by its perpendicular distance. So let's find out what its perpendicular distance is by drawing this imaginary red dotted line. This is going to be the perpendicular distance just here. This is going to be d1, right? And this right here, if I were to continue this vector on with this imaginary red dotted line, this distance can be seen to be d2. Notice their perpendicular distances. This is d2. And we can find the net moment about point A due to these forces by simply realizing that F1 produces a positive counterclockwise torque. No mass is required for this. You can just see that force 1 is producing a positive counterclockwise torque about point A. So that's just going to be F1, the magnitude of our force 1, times by D1, our distance D1. And because F2 is producing a negative clockwise torque, we're going to be subtracting that from F2, the magnitude of our force 2, times by D2. Right? This is how you find out your net moment about point A. Now, a small disclaimer, you could have also done this using cross products with linear algebra, but I won't go into that in this particular video. All right, which means that our, our, our equivalent couple about point A can simply be written as our net moment about point A. This is our answer. This right here is our equivalent, equivalent force couple system system. I hope that makes sense. So if you're asked in this particular, in a problem like this, to find the equivalent force couple system about point A, you simply solve for our net moments about point A and the net force and you'll be done and make sure you draw a free body diagram with the corresponding axis and you would get full marks for that. Okay, before I end this particular video, I just want to go on a minor sidetrack um, while I'm on a roll here. So I want to quickly introduce you to two formulas, one of which I think you know very well, which is the sum of forces on any body is going to be equal to the mass of that body times by the acceleration of that particular body, where your acceleration is always parallel to your net force. We're probably really familiar with this formula, but a formula we're probably not too familiar with is the sum of forces, sorry, the sum of moments about point A is going to be equal to our moment of inertia about point A times by our angular acceleration about point A. Okay, well this is probably an unfamiliar expression to you, mainly because you probably don't know what the moment of inertia is yet, but 
rest assured I'll make a few videos on that later. For now, all you need to know is moment of inertia is just a property of the geometry and mass distribution of your object. Nothing more than that. It's very, it's very analogous to your mass, actually, in the equation above. These are two formulas we're going to be using a whole lot later for both statics and dynamics. All right, I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, I hope you learned something.